we'll have our Bible readings. And before we do, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, as we listen to your word, give us spiritual wisdom and understanding so that we may know you better, love you more, and please you in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The first Bible reading is from the book of Ruth, chapter 3. Ruth's mother-in-law Naomi said to her, My daughter, shouldn't I find rest for you so that you will be taken care of? Now isn't Boaz our relative? Haven't you been working with his female servants? This evening he will be winnowing barley on the threshing floor. Wash, put on perfumed oil and wear your best clothes. Go down to the threshing floor, but don't let the man know you are there until he has finished eating and drinking. When he lies down, notice the place where he's lying. Go in and uncover his feet and lie down. Then he will explain to you what you should do. So Ruth said to her, I will do everything you say. She went down to the threshing floor and did everything her mother-in-law had charged her to do. After Boaz ate, drank, and was in good spirits, he went to lie down at the end of the pile of barley, and she came secretly, uncovered his feet, and lay down. At midnight, Boaz was startled, turned over, and there lying at his feet was a woman. So he asked, Who are you? I am Ruth, your servant, she replied. Take me under your wing, for you are a family redeemer. Then he said, May the Lord bless you, my daughter. You have shown more kindness now than before, because you have not pursued younger men, whether rich or poor. Now don't be afraid, my daughter. I will do for you whatever you say, since all the people in my town know that you are a woman of noble character. Yes, it is true that I am a family redeemer, but there is a redeemer closer than I am. Stay here tonight, and in the morning, if he wants to redeem you, that's good. Let him redeem you. But if he doesn't want to redeem you, as the Lord lives, I will. Now lie down until morning. So she lay down at his feet until morning, but got up while it was still dark. Then Boaz said, Don't let it be known that a woman came to the threshing floor. And he told Ruth, Bring the shawl you're wearing and hold it out. When she held it out, he shoveled six measures of barley into her shawl and she went into town. She went to her mother-in-law Naomi who asked her, What happened, my daughter? Then Ruth told her everything the man had done for her. She said, He gave me these six measures of barley because he said, don't go back to your mother-in-law empty-handed. Naomi said, My daughter, wait until you find out how things go, for he won't rest unless he resolves this today. Dear Lord, we thank you that you are a God who cares for us and provides for us. We thank you that we can see how you rescued and redeemed your people Israel in the Old Testament and that you have extended salvation to all who believe and trust in you through your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray that we might be a people who respond in good works produced by our faith, service prompted by love, and endurance inspired by the hope that we have in our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that despite the physical isolation that many of us face, that you will be helping us to continue in fellowship together. We pray that you will be helping us through your spirit to be diligent in our daily devotions, excited to read more of your word and speak to you, our loving Father. We thank you for all the things that you have given us, both big and small. We pray that your presence will continue to give us joy, even when we suffer through hard times, 
and we thank you for the joy that we will experience in eternal life secured through Jesus' resurrection. We pray that the truth that God is our Lord through Jesus Christ would be our greatest joy and comfort, especially as we see that the many things that the world puts its hope in are fleeting and insubstantial. We pray that you will give us increasing joy in being part of your people, and we thank you for the encouragement that we experience through fellowship with one another. Dear Lord, we pray for all of the people killed and injured in the explosion in the port of Beirut in Lebanon. We pray that you will be helping the medical staff as they see to all those who have been injured, as well as those who are sick from coronavirus. We pray <clears throat> for all of those whose homes have been damaged or destroyed, that you will provide for their needs. We pray that aid may get through to where it is needed, that corruption will be dealt with, and that you will be helping the government to provide leadership and care for the people of Lebanon at this time. Dear Lord, we pray for the Diocese of Marsabit, North Kenya. We thank you that some ministry has still been able to continue despite the virus, and we thank you that there have only been a small number of cases in the Marsabit Diocese. We pray that people might be responsible to not spread the virus and obey the medical advice. We pray for the 25,000 people who have had who have or have had the virus in Kenya and for the families of the 400 people who have died. We pray for your mercy on those who have been affected economically by the virus and the recent crop failures, that those who are hungry may be fed and cared for. We thank you that Norm and Janelle have still been able to be involved in some ministry through technology, including reading books aloud over WhatsApp, Barana language work like translating a children's Bible and updating a belief book, making Bible text available in soft copy, sending biblical encouragement to those who have leadership responsibilities, and finding resources. We pray for the local language copies of the Lord's Prayer, Apostles' Creed, the Sunday Passage and Bible Literacy lessons that Janelle left with her students and others, that people who are seeking Jesus may find them and read them. We thank you that after recent tribal violence, there have not been any attacks for some weeks. We pray for the tension and unresolved issues that still exist and pray that you will provide peace and reconciliation amongst people there. We pray for those who cannot attend or connect with the church, that you will be helping them to continue to put their trust in you for their daily and eternal needs. We thank you that a vacation Bible school program was able to be run and that many children came. We thank you for Stephen and Bakayo and Jaso and the team who ran it. As school has been closed until the end of the year, we pray for the children and youth who suddenly have a lot of time on their hands. We pray that the Vacation Bible School program can be duplicated across the 60 churches in the diocese. Dear Lord, we thank you for Bible study groups at church, and we thank you for the many people who facilitate these groups. We pray for your guidance over these groups as they decide what to study. We pray that they may be a place where your word is read engaged with and meditated on. We pray for spiritual growth, mutual prayer and encouragement, pastoral care and fellowship amongst those who attend. We thank you that the recent church AGM was able to take place online and that it went well. We pray for those who have taken on various positions. We pray for our wardens that you will help equip them for all of the many and varied acts of service they perform for our church. We pray for our parish councillors that you will help them give them guidance to make decisions for our church. We pray for our synod representatives, that you will give them wisdom as they attend synod and help make big decisions for the diocese, including electing a new archbishop during their term. We pray for our nominators, that if they are called upon, you will give them wisdom and insight as they decide upon a new minister. Dear Lord, we pray for those who we know who are experiencing loneliness, grief, chronic pain, suffering, mental and physical illness, that you will care for our needs. We pray all this in the name of your Son, our Lord. Amen.